A country's capital city is one of its biggest national symbols. We all think of it as the heart of the country, the one place that everyone in the world instantly identifies the country with. For example, if I say London, then you think of the United Kingdom. If I say Tokyo, then you immediately think of Japan. And if I simply say Paris, then of course you think of France. That's how unique a country's capital is, because there's a globally accepted idea that every capital city is unique to one country. But what if I told you that somewhere in the heart of Europe, there is one capital city that's literally shared by two countries? That capital city is Nicosia in Southeast Europe. Since 1983, Nicosia has been shared as a capital city by two different countries. On one side, the Republic of Cyprus, and on the other, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And the origin of this incredibly rare and awkward situation, where two countries are sharing one capital, goes all the way back to 1974. But before we get into the history of all of this, there is something fundamental that you should know here. Cyprus has always been split ethnically between Turkish and Greek ethnicities. And so with that in mind, we go back to 1974, when a coup by Greece broke out in Cyprus with the underlying goal of uniting Cyprus with Greece. Now, this obviously didn't go down well with the people of Cyprus who were ethnically Turkish. And so in response to this coup, Turkey invaded Cyprus, occupying the northern part of the country and effectively carving it out as a separate entity. In response to the conflict, the United Nations enforced a buffer zone in the middle of Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus at the time, essentially dividing the city into two sides, a Greek side in the south and a Turkish side in the north, all in an effort to keep the peace. But by 1983, the Turkish side in the north declared itself as a new country called the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, with its capital city as the northern part of Nicosia. Now, this effectively left the Republic of Cyprus with the southern part of Nicosia as its own capital, creating this incredibly unique situation where two countries literally share one capital with both sides separated by a buffer zone. Now, it's important to understand that before all of this, all of Nicosia was united as one city within one country before being split right through the middle. And so there's an important question to ask here. How do the daily lives of the people living in this divided capital differ? And the answer is very much and in more ways than you can probably imagine. For starters, even though they live in and share one city, the people on both sides of Nicosia do not speak the same language. In the Turkish side in the north, the predominant language is Turkish. And in contrast, in the Greek side in the south, as you can guess, the main language is Greek. And then there's also the question of religion. And again, there's a big difference here. Islam is the dominant religion in Northern Cyprus, while Orthodox Christianity is the dominant religion in the south. Now, beyond the cultural and social differences, there's also one key economic difference, and that is the currency. Because the Republic of Cyprus uses the Euro as its currency, while the Turkish Lira is the currency used in Northern Nicosia. And then of course, there's a huge geopolitical difference as well between both sides, with the Republic of Cyprus being a member of the European Union, while the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is recognized by only one country on Earth. And as you can guess, that country is Turkey. And so what you have are these staggering and huge differences in the daily lives of people who are literally sharing one city. Today, the division is such that both sides of the capital require paperwork just to cross the buffer zone that divides the capital. Now, there's another important question to ask here. What are the chances that both countries could reunite and save Nicosia from the infamous tag of being the last divided capital on Earth? And the answer is that those chances do not look good. Even though there have been talks about possible reunification over the past 20 years, the truth is, those talks have pretty much been false dawns without any tangible result. The most significant attempt at reuniting the country and the capital came way back in 2004, 
with a plan proposed by the former UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan. Now, this plan proposed the creation of a united country to be known as United Cyprus Republic, comprising of both the Turkish and Greek sides of the country. But this plan required the approval of the people on both sides, and so separate referendums were conducted in April of 2004 to gain approval from the people the plan was seeking to reunite. In the Turkish Northern Cyprus, the plan was approved and accepted by 65% of the voters, but that was not enough because it was rejected in the Greek Southern Cyprus by 76% of voters, which effectively killed the plan. Today, it's unclear if future talks could possibly succeed and result in the reunification of Cyprus. But until that happens, what is clear is that the physical buffer between both sides of the city will continue to be a constant reminder of one of the world's most unique geopolitical situations, the fact that one capital city is being shared by two different countries. That's it for today, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, then do subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to give the video a thumbs up because that really helps me make more cool videos like this one. And if you're interested in a video about why countries move their capital cities, then hit play on this next video. See you in the next one.